Yeah, and then you can play. Daddy, you want to help me get the double door? <laughs> double? 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 <laughs> uh, aloha friends and family, what's up? We're going to do a snake room, a reptile room tour today for you guys. I was getting ready to do a blood python care video and a big part of that video was ending up being a snake room tour because a big part of showing people how to care for things is showing exactly how everything's set up in your room and to, for part of the specifics. So it seemed like I needed to make its own video for that. So that's what we're going to do. First I got to get this little turd nugget to school and then we got to go pick up some rabbits at Lane Labs and uh, take you guys along with me for that because it's a beautiful drive. And then we'll come back and do a snake room tour. Sound good? Sound good. Sound great. Mr. Noah Sage. What? What do you know? I know. I want to go to school right now! <laughs> yeah, we're late. We gotta go. Hi, right, bud. You have fun and be a good boy, okay? Okay. Love you, dude. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Let go of the handle, please. Okay, gonna try. Bye. Bye, bud. They grow so fast. See, I love coming out here because it's just, it's just out in the country. I get to come in here, pick up my rats. Rats, they're, rat, they're rabbits. They're rabbits. I don't know why I said rats. Those are rabbits. <laughs> Thank you, Lane Labs. I, I get most of my rodents from uh, my buddy Forrest over at uh, Cold Blooded Cafe. You guys should check them out if you haven't already. But they don't have rabbits, so I need to come down here to get rabbits. And I love to drive down here just because there's like, it's just out in the country, man. And it, I end up spending about half as much as gas as I would in shipping to come grab this stuff. And it's just a nice little beautiful drive for me. But it's time for the snake room tour. That's what you guys came here for, right? Well, I guess it's a, it's a reptile room tour, actually, because there's not just snakes in it anymore. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance that this video seems a little tad bit rushed, but I've got an educational program to do about 100 miles from here in just a little bit, so I wanna get this done, go do that thing, and then I've got, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I got you guys set up on an angle over here. Ooh, actually, one quick side note real quick. A lot of people are asking me when uh, the nerd video is going out. This is a nerd shirt, by the way, with Kevin McCurley on Triple B TV, our other channel, Triple B TV, and uh, some people are just, hate me for having taken so long to release that stuff and I you know I'm sorry I, I hate you too no hard feelings I just I do them in the order that they're recorded and they get released once a week and when we're at a show then I have time to record a bunch of them and have people around to record a bunch of them so that's when I do it but anyway um I've got you guys sitting over here just in case you need a different angle so you can kind of see what's going on and get perspective of where I'm at in the room and uh, let's start with what I think is the most important, most important uh, thing in this room. Yeah, I guess they're all important, but there's some things that are really, really important. And the first thing is this fan right here. So this fan, this beautiful fan that I've started many a video with shooting up at that fan. So the way it's rotating right now is actually the direction that pulls air up. So air is being pulled up into this fan right now and it's being paraded around out to the sides of the room. So it's going, pushing air down that side, pushing the air down this side, pushing air down that side, pushing air down this side and pulling it up from the center of the room. Now, why that's important is because almost all of these walls, basically all these walls have the heat on the racks in the back and they're being heated from the back side of the rack. This is where the heat is on the back side here. Sorry, it's a little bit dusty, I need to clean. But yes, so the back sides of these walls, they all have heat rising. And so the fact that this fan 
is pulling up from the ground and pushing down against the walls. It's circulating that heat and put because the heat rises. If you didn't know, heat rises. And that heat is being pushed back down and circulated up that way to maintain kind of an even spot in the room so you don't have all the heat getting trapped up in the back corners of the walls. It's being pushed down, recirculated through to keep it even. And this room stays in the winter time, roughly in the low 70s to high 70s, you know, somewhere in between the 70s. You can see in the last 24 hours, it's gone down to 72 and up to 77, just a fluctuation of things turning on. And it's always around, I don't know why that's so low. That's, that's got, that can't be right. 41%, it never gets down to 41%. You know, I might have done something weird over here, like turn this off for a while. Uh, that allowed it to fall to 41%. Usually, the humidity doesn't drop below 50% in this room. It's almost always in the mid 50s, sometimes high 50s. Now, how I heat this room is, let me show you. I've got an oil-filled radiant heater right here, and that is plugged in to a Ranko thermostat right back there. You see that thing right there? It's a Ranko thermostat. You can find them online, and I've got that plugged in there, and that thermostat has its own little probe that hangs right here. And so anytime it drops below, below 75 degrees in here, this heater will kick on. And this heater, when I'm not filming videos and when I'm not in the room, usually lives right here underneath this fan. So when the heater kicks on, it gets pulled, the air gets pulled up from the fan, shoved down the sides, and just adds a little bit of extra heat so that the room never drops below 75 degrees, give or take. And then in the summertime, I've got the same deal. It's this trip light air conditioner unit. And the nice thing about this unit is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't condense water, so you don't have to worry about dripping water anywhere. And that's also hooked up to another one of these Ranko thermostats over here with a little probe hanging down in the room. Deet -de -deet. There it is, hanging right there. Probe hanging down. So the whole year round, this room never drops below 70, below 70s, and never gets above 80. As soon as it hits 80 degrees, that Ranko thermostat kicks on that air conditioning and keeps it below 80 degrees in here. So year round, with it being, you know, it stays in the hotter end in the summer and the lower end in the winter, so we do get some f seasonal fluctuation. It's not 100% unseasonal in this room. Not to mention uh, barometric pressure. When it's raining outside, that's one thing this room doesn't have that I kind of wish it did, is a window but um, I'm renting and I was lucky enough to even just build this wall in the first place. So if I was building a reptile room from scratch, I would 100% include a window so that I could A, air the room out, B, um, allow that barometric pressure. I can just open the door, but it'd be great to have a window. Okay, now what we've got over in this corner of the room is we've got my humidifier. This is an evaporative, evaporative, evaporative humidifier, as you can see right there. And what that means basically is that it, it, it humidifies the room through evaporation. Instead of putting mist in the air or something, it's got these little filters in here that the air pulls through and it puts uh, moisture in the air without putting mist in the air. It's kind of cool. That's hooked up to a Herbstat over here, and I've got that set at about 60 degrees on the humidity setting. Got that humidity probe right there. Hangs in the middle of the room, picks up the humidity. When it drops below 60%, it kicks on there, and it kicks on here and you got the humidifier keeping the room humid. Now these are kind of what I consider like important. <laughs> it's maintaining temperatures, ambient temperatures and humidity in your room. When I'm giving somebody advice on how to set their enclosure, I like to know first like how is your room set up? Because if your room is just in your house and it's at the mercy of whatever happens in your house, it's different than if you have full control over your environment in here. I could fine tune this even more, but it's basically to set it, forget it. I like there to be seasons in the room. I like it to be, in the low 70s some of the time and in you know getting up in the 80s when it's summertime or low you know high 70s that's kind of it that's kind of it for the uh, the basics of how the room's set up controlling humidity controlling temperature everything else is enclosures and i guess i could run you through like all the equipment i've gotten here we could do that real quick so here i've got kind of a conglomerate of i don't know what's happening right now there's just we got a tarantula in there we got a crested gecko in there we've got a toad in there um, there's nothing down there. I just set this thing back up. We got some cockroaches over here. This is kind of like the, the mixed bag of, of the side of the room. Then of course over here we've got um, the Serpentine Obsessions of Closures. And these are all Reptile Basics Radiant Heat Panels in the back. Um, and the probe there in every single enclosure is set up to another thermostat up on top that's controlling all of these. And so I got four retics and then we got our big girl Roxanne here who's still working on shedding out completely, but she's getting there. 
you're getting the Roxanne. She's coming to the show today. And I've got all kinds of, you know, random lighting stuff set up, how I light my room. That's not important. Oh, here we got a Freedom Breeder 1010. This is actually the first uh, reptile enclosure I've ever got when I moved back from Hawaii was, was this stack right here. And I've got some other things. I think that's a uh, Herptastic, and it's got those Freedom Breeder tubs in it, which are fantastic. And they got the ventilation. They got the cup holder built in. These are great for breeders uh, or, you know, baby hatchlings. I've got a, uh, I think that's a Reptile Basic stack down there as well. Um, this is another Freedom Breeder style rack. It's got the Freedom Breeder tubs in it. My buddy Shannon actually built me this rack, and uh, I ended up having to modify it a little bit to fit the tubs in. So he, he actually sent me Junior. Uh, for my troubles. Junior was the snake that came because of this rack not being perfect, so thanks Shannon. And then over here we got my favorite stuff right here. This is this is my custom setup. Anybody can have a setup like this. It's not just because I'm sponsored by Freedom Breeder that I'm able to get this. Like anybody who wants to build a custom rack like this, just call up Jesse, tell him like what levels you want. There's an adapter here so you can attach the hatchling racks on top of the 1040 and there's a bunch that are on the same frame size like the 1040 uh, stacks on top of the 1030, stacks on top of the 66-5. You can see so you can have all these different um, tub setups in the same exact rack stack. And I'm I'm super stoked on this setup. It's like perfect. I'd like to work with them actually to make another type of thing that's ideal for somebody who's like a you know a closet breeder or you know a bedroom breeder and has like wants to have a certain amount of 1030, certain amount of 1040s, and a certain amount of hatchlings all in one rack, all with a freedom breeder thermostat set up for four different zones. That's what else we've got controlling most everything in these rooms. You got these uh, Freedom Breeder. That's the the two channel um, thing, and I've got two of those up there on the nice little rack mounts that make it really easy to access and nice and location looks nice and clean. And then Freedom Breeder also recently released a uh, four channel, four zone thermostat that I'm using to control all four zones on this because I've got zone one, zone two, zone three, and then zone four. So I'm running all of this entire rack with that four channel thermostat up there. Pretty freaking sweet. It's my personal opinion that ball pythons do best in a rack system. There's actually a study done recently that um, was testing the reaction of different snakes to um, UV light. And the only species of all the snakes that were tested that didn't show any reaction whatsoever to having UV light introduced to their setup was ball pythons. Which makes sense if you think about how they, how they live in the wild. But... I just thought that was interesting. Like almost every other snake species had showed some kind of benefit or some kind of change in uh, metabolism, except for ball pythons. I just think that this is the best way to keep ball pythons, personally. If you live in Florida, you can go ahead and keep them outside. That's a great thing, but that's what I'm talking about. That's why I made this video to show you how my room's set up. If you, if you came over to this video from the blood python care video, you can stop watching here and go back and pick up right where you left off on the blood python care video, because that's where this, that's gonna pick back up. Um, for those of you guys that are either here for the first time watching or whatever, or you're not watching the Blood Python Care video, you can watch that one next. Right now, I'm just gonna go through and show you guys some of the animals we've got in this room. And Roxanne has just been going crazy, so I guess she wants some attention. She's been so weird since she started to have her first shed here with us. She'll like go for my hand and think it's food, which she never used to do. But she's just getting wild. She never used to try and crawl out like this. She's just, uh, she's a good girl. Just don't bite my finger, Roxanne. It's not food. Thank you. So she's going to come to the educational show today. Uh, yeah. She's going to flop right out of this cage if she's not careful. Oh, beauty. Cindy, she's in shed right now. But she's going to produce her... This is the first snake that we produced that produced a clutch for us last season. And she's on point to produce another one this season. So... That's pretty exciting. Then of course we got the queen. She's taking this season off, unfortunately, but that's just what it is. If, if the snake's not looking like she's ready to go, then she's not ready to go. And she gets the season off. Beautiful snake. Also in shed. What the hell? Oh, look at this creature over here. <laughs> I'm not a creature. Hey, Scrimmies. What? What do you know? Nothing. What? <laughs> Nothing? Nope, not nothing at all. Nothing at all? Nope. If you're gonna come in this room, you gotta know something. Hmm. I know. Red tegus. What about red tegus? That they eat rats and bunnies and they shed their skin and they don't have any teeth and they have a tongue and they 
have claws, and that's what I know. Okay, I'm... first of all, red tegus definitely have teeth. No, they don't. Most uh, agree to disagree, I guess. What did you come down here for, bud? Do you want to see something in particular? Yeah. I want to feed animals. We're not feeding animals right now, but I'm getting packed up to go to a show. What show? I've got an educational show in a little bit we're going to do. And where's that new um, light thingy you got? Light thingy? Oh, yeah. you, you're, looking for my, you're looking for this? Yeah. No. By the way, guys, this is also a very important key feature to have in any snake room. One of these little thermometer guns. Temp and gun, so you can temp gun everything in the room, see what the exact temperature is at every hot spot, everywhere in the room that you could possibly want to know what the temperature is. You just point it, shoot it, you've got an exact temperature. If you're keeping animals that require thermoregulation of themselves, you need one of these things so you can see what the temperatures are everywhere that animal is. Indigo snake, yes. These are actually the only animals in the room that I have set on a night drop. Thing. I've, I've got their hotspot set to 92 during the day and then it drops to just ambient temperatures in the room the rest of the time so yep freaking awesome snakes dude really stoked on these my favorite Put a little spider inside her. Scratch the leopard gecko. Yes. Lucky, the beautiful children's python. Yes, very, very lucky indeed. A little toad a la mode. Stevie, the turtley McTurt. This is going to be Dio's first show with us. Mr. Crested Gecko. Yes. We are bringing Sunset, our indigo snake. Oh, yes, indeed. RC, our little eyeless reticulated python. He comes to all the shows, teaches the kids about heat pits. Who could forget Jerry, our little fatty McFat frog? <laughs> Jerry, you're freaking awesome, dude. Roxanne, who's just been raring to go. Oh, she's ready. Oh, she's ready. She wants to go. Okay, we're going. Well, she almost put herself away. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. Good girl though. How could I possibly forget the roaches? How could I even do that? Ugh. All right, we're out of here. You folks have yourselves a wonderful day. Oh, uh, the blood python video that I referenced, that's coming next.